Will UKIP cause another earthquake in the general election next year? Will UKIP cause another earthquake in the general election next year? Piers Morgan. It's been very interesting watching the rise of UKIP from America, where I've been the whole time it's been going on, because looking from the outside, my initial reaction was, you know, like most people probably, a bunch of crackpots, this isn't going to last. And then slowly but surely they gathered momentum, and I tried to work out why this was happening. And I, I think the, the answer is that the, the British people are basically fed up with mediocrity. They look at the leaders of these three parties and they see three very similar sounding, similar looking, white, middle class, middle aged, quite posh gentlemen who seem to have no relation to the real world. You've got Mr. Boring, you've got Mr. Weird, you've got Mr. Useless. <laughs> and along comes Nigel Farage who, for all his faults, and he's got faults, he seems like a regular guy. Louise. Thank you. Um, well, thank you to my two uh, panellists for completely insulting and denigrating the five and a half million people who did vote for UKIP uh, last week. I didn't week. Such no, thing. Um, Yes, you did. You're patronising and sanctimonious. Um, Sorry? The fact is... The Never fa been called the, that. The fa <laughs> I'm sure it's only one of many things you've been called, Pierce. <laughs> anyway, the, the, the fact is five and a half million people did go out and vote for UKIP. Obviously, what the establishment cannot understand in any way is the disconnect that the normal people of this country feel from feel with the establishment there is a total disconnect they look at Westminster they look at the green leather and they see nobody at all that represents them nobody who looks like them nobody who talks like them and so they've looked to something else and that is why UKIP won last Thursday. The fact is, people want to see people they recognise. We want to see our representatives recognise. We want to recognise what they feel. We want to know that they're going through the kind of things that we go through on a regular basis. And that's what the political class is not doing in this country. And in fact, the political class and the establishment are that we are the symptom of how they have treated the people of this country. And the misinformation, like Pierce has just given out, about the legalising handguns, banning gay marriage. What utter nonsense. This not, is the misinformation. Sorry, minute, Hang on. Minute, the, you've had your say. Nigel the Farage misinformation said he wanted to giving out handguns. by the political establishment and the media in this country is incredible. What I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, you, you know, over the summer we will be putting together a domestic manifesto. This election has been fought on two things because it's a European election. So, of course, it's been fought on Europe. Of course, it has. It's a European election. Okay. Over the summer we will have a full manifesto of domestic policies that yeah. all of you will be able to scrutinise, and so you should, and that is absolutely is right. Is it not true that Nigel Farage said he wanted to legalise hangouts no, again in this country? No, that's absolutely not true. What he was actually talking about was the fact that it was a disgrace that the Olympic gun team had to go outside of this country to train, and he said that was ludicrous, and I'm sorry, you're telling What's me that's not ludicrous? No, that, that, that wasn't what he said. Okay, okay, it let's is leave. what he said. All right, isn't what he all right. said. I mean, I personally would look at moving abroad if Nigel Farage was our leader next year. <laughs> and, and you over there. Yeah. In my personal opinion, I think that um, UKIP's support will fall in the general election when people start to focus on issues which affect them. Mm -hmm. So I live in Hammersmith and there's just been a stunning victory there from Labour in the council election mm -hmm. because they focus on the local NHS. And I think that when people read UKIP's last manifesto, where they wanted to privatise large parts of the NHS. As a doctor who works in the NHS, I think the British public are going to reject that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, um... I'm sorry, that again is misinformation. No, you, again, this is misinformation that's perpetuated by the establishment. We have never said we want to privatise the NHS. What we have said is we would like to streamline the NHS. Get, oh. There's 48% of people who work for the NHS who aren't clinically trained. Mm. Why, is, why aren't those resources targeted it, yeah. as doctors and nurses? All they represent to me is UKIP is the best of a bad bunch. So if I'm, in a, if I'm somewhere and there was four really ugly girls, I'm thinking, well... She's, she's oh, not dear, the oh, worst, because that's all you are. That's all you are to us. That's all you are. I have to say, the ignorance just espoused well, by this gentleman you are, here, he basically fulfils the mission, doesn't he, that footballers' brains are in their feet? Well, because he's absolutely proved that well, to me tonight. Well, well, what an offensive do. thing to say, well, Mr well, Barton. Okay. Is it not very worrying that so many UKIP associates and MEPs and people who represent UKIP 
have come out as racist or making worrying comments. We know that some of our procedures have been flawed. We're the first ones to admit that. Hold our hands up, and when these people speak out, we throw them out. But what about you your know? own? What about your own leader who goes on radio and says he doesn't want to live next to Romanians? He didn't say that, Peter. He did You're say twisting that. Twisting it. He did say You're that. twisting it and spinning it as a media man. Does. Okay, I'm getting well, not. You, you are. He didn't say that. And it creates an atmosphere. He did not of, say that of, at all. Of, I voted UKIP for the first time. Why? Because what Louise was saying, actually. Because I think for the last few years, all we've heard is talk, talk, talk. And UKIP at last are talking on behalf of the British people, or they're certainly talking to me. And as long as the, the major parties keep on making these uh, noises that they are listening to us, um, I'm going to, well, as I say, until they actually deliver, I want to, to vote UKIP because at least they, they, they give us a voice and I, I you know, oh, how, how can it's I put this? It's, oh, it, 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 it just feels as though I'm being talked to like a naughty schoolboy, that my vote is a protest vote and next year I'll be a good boy they and come back into that, the fold, fold and vote Conservative. There's a poll today conducted by ITV of people who voted UKIP at this election and 72% of those people said they would continue to vote UKIP in 2015. Now we know, I, honestly I would not insult your intelligence, we know we've got a long way to go, we know we're flawed. As a political party we're a baby. We've only been in existence for 21 years. And yes, our procedures and things, met, you, you know, people get through the net. But we are working really, really hard. And when those kind of things, sir, come up that you mentioned before, we kick them out. Because I also think those things are repellent and odious. The question, I think, is that um, the European election that we've just had is on proportional representation. And we had effectively virtually 30% of the voting public voted for UKIP for particular reasons in a European election. We now have an, an ordinary by-election coming up in Newark, which is my hometown, um, and it will be very interesting to see whether that momentum can carry on into a conventional election on a first-past-the-post uh, uh, system. And I think that's the real uh, growing up of UKIP to uh, extend its uh, support, not only to cover other issues, but to uh, enable its uh, MPs to uh, MPs to, uh, uh, to uh, candidates to become successful. When at the moment the UKIP uh, uh, support is pretty well evenly spread throughout the country and including Wales and including Scotland, um, but it's right. not peaking in any particular place. So there Newark, are Newark spots, next but week will be, many. be very Newark next week will be the first Newark test. is one of those yes. hotspots. Well, I'm a Labour supporter, but I voted for UKIP uh, the last election. And I think the question is, is why, did, uh, why did the five million people voted for UKIP? And, and, I mean, why, and why did you as a Labour supporter? Because, um, I mean, you know, this is, it's not, this is real life. I mean, what, what UKIP are talking about, it's happening on the street. It's not about racism, it's about the economy accept, accepting immigrants more than what they can afford. So when people go go on a, on a to look for a job and they can't find it. People get angry. It's real. When people are get frustrated because they can't get that housing or their kids can't get to the next school, it's real life. So, so when, when the, the answers like from uh, David saying that, okay, it's a protest, we know we're going to go and sort it out. But you're forgetting that you are the ones who actually put us in that, in that mm -hmm. situation in the first place. You know? So, Vote for you, Kip. It's a real vote. And if you, do, if you don't do something about it, I, I'm expecting to vote for you, Kip, again. The Tories' policy on immigration doesn't work. Because, exactly. No, because they cannot affect what's happening on, on a Euro immigration. What they're doing is they're just attacking students and people outside the EU. You can and it's only a tiny small number of those people. It's actually... absolutely right. Yes, yes, yes. I'm young. And I did vote UKIP. I'm actually really passionately interested in politics. You did vote UKIP? Yeah. The reason I voted for UKIP wasn't because of immigration, it was because I passionately believe that the UK should be a sovereign nation which shouldn't have to be part of a European United States nation. project. We're not actually, I don't feel personally European. And if you look at everyone in the European Commission, they talk of a European dream yeah. and the European state and the European yeah. armed forces. I don't want to be part of yeah. that. But I just want to say to Joe Barton, he says, uh, young people don't vote. I actually think 
the reason people don't vote isn't because they're disillusioned, it's because they haven't been educated in politics. I'm one of only a very few number of people in my school who do politics. But if Mr. A Willis, lot of, the, a Mr. Lot of Willis. those people did vote the last general election, though, yeah. a lot of those people did vote um, because of what yeah, Lib but, Dems were but promising. The reason, the reason they don't vote is because they haven't been informed about politics at all. Should full details of discussions between George Bush and Tony Blair in respect of the Iraq war be made public? This is the row that's been going on over the Chilcot report on the origins of the Iraq war and the decision that was announced today in a letter that they have now reached an agreement on what can and can't be published um, in, put into the public domain. Um, who would like to start on this? Piers Morgan, you start on it because you're... Well, when I was editor of the Daily Mirror, we fought long and hard a campaign against the Iraq war. It was unsuccessful, uh, but nothing that's happened since in Iraq has persuaded me that it was not a valid campaign, and I hoped it had been successful. And I had lots of dealings with Tony Blair at the time uh, at Downing Street and was into his mind a little bit about what was going on. And I always believed I, my brother was fighting for the British Army in Basra, so I had a vested interest on all sides of this. And I always believed that basically... Tony Blair had said to George Bush, I'm in whatever happens. And I believe when he didn't get the second UN resolution that he had already told George Bush and the Americans were going in. And that, to me, turned our involvement in the Iraq war into an illegal involvement in the Iraq war. I agree with, 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 with Pierce and, and oh. Joey. I think we have a... Have, you'll be glad to know. Um, <laughs> we have a fundamental right, don't we, as British people, to, to know... What is, it, what is in those papers? I mean, our men and women in the armed forces went out and fought and died um, because of those decisions. And I think it again highlights the disconnect between the politicians and the public. They forget that they work for us, actually. We, you know, we've elected them into office and they are, they're, they're public servants there on our behalf. And we have a fundamental right to know why we were taken into what I believe was an illegal war. And even... I mean, I think it's really quite insulting, actually, to say that we will only get the gist, we will only get excerpts of what was talked about. I think that's absolutely disgusting. Right. Louise, it Ma let's say what the government say about it. Ma no, Margaret Curran, a Labour supporter and supporter yeah. of Tony Blair. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think it's not all being published? And why has Sir John Chilcott apparently accepted that it won't all be published? I've not seen all the details of what is actually being said today. I think I saw the word just being used yeah. and it won't, it won't be everything that we some excerpts yes. from it. I think that's my understanding of what's happened. Um, I mean, I think the principle of disclosure is important and I think the principle of, and that's what Chilcott is actually trying to do for the British people and broader, I suppose, more broadly. And I think some of the previous inquiries have tried to do that. The people are aware of what happened in Iraq and why we went to war, why leaderships and governments behaved that they, they did. Um, I assume that part of the explanation for not full disclosure is about secrecy and protocols of government and secret shared security um, protections on that basis, and that's part of the explanation. It doesn't seem to be just security. For instance, there's a line in it about not attempting to explain George Bush's position, which is very curious. Well, sure, I presume that's because the Americans have to explain their own position. This OK, what about explaining um, Tony Blair's position? Well, I think that this is what has to be explained. But if, they, ex <laughs> if they don't quote, if you don't quote from telephone conversations, you just give the gist of a telephone conversation. You know what that means. That's what people do in ordinary life. They give the gist of something and you don't get a real flavour of what the people were saying. To protect Anglo-American relations, we can't just say, oh, well, we can't, you know, we can't show that because it will damage this, it will be the secrecy. There's people who've lost oh, the, I... the, the sons and daughters. They have the right to know why their lives were, were, were taken. OK, you said the spectacles then. Check, check, yes. Um, your party took us against the will of the people into an illegal war. We deserve to know, the people of the world deserve to know what happened. We're not going to get it. We don't, we don't deserve to get a gist. We, you work for us. We deserve to know every single thing that went wrong, why we spent billions going into an illegal war that has done nothing for the world and has actually worsened our national security. We have a war that is fought on what turns out to be an entirely false pretext that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. I'm, I've never accused Tony Blair of lying. I think he probably did believe 
that Saddam had those weapons. I'm sure George Bush believed it too. But when it turned out that he demonstrably did not have them, at that point, this inquiry becomes incredibly important yep. because the lies Absolutely. that Joey talked about are Absolutely. people who've lost them on yep. a false pretext. The soldiers, including my brother, who went on the front line and risked their lives and in some cases gave their lives, they are doing it then for the wrong reasons. And that's why this transcript could clear up whether Tony Blair, the British Prime Minister, gave assurances which he did not share with the British people or with the British mm. Parliament. Mm -hmm. And if you don't reveal yeah. them, everyone's going to assume that is what's on them. And, and, and um, I wonder if there's a this sort of tapping into the disconnect that people feel with their parties, that there's a kind of a quid pro quo that needs to happen if, if our phone calls and our emails and our communication is going to be tapped at will, then surely that transparency should work both ways. We're in an age of Big Brother, that should work both ways. And, right. and the second point I want to make is Joe Barton. Um, I was with you on some of the things you said. I think the analogy you made of four ugly girls, that's going to be on Twitter. For I tonight apologize. and tomorrow, you'll be buried for All it. All right, well, uh, there's, there's lots, but I do apologise. I couldn't think of a better one. I mean, this is the first time I've ever done it, as, as Louise <laughs> rightly pointed out. Uh, my brains are in my feet, which is an equally offensive statement. I think I could see on your face statement. you realise what you said, but it, it will Yeah, carry. maybe I was a little bit nervous. I, I apologise. That's all I can... OK, let's leave that. the Mayor Culpa and go on to another question. <laughs> Melissa Hughes. Should Heathrow Airport have a third runway? What's UKIP's policy on it, Louise Bourne? <laughs> well, I have to admit to having a bit of a north-south divide on this one, I'm afraid, because I represent the north-west, and it's a bit like when we have the lead story on the news about the tube strike, so it's really kind of, well... We really don't care if you've got a tube strike, a tr strike in London. It doesn't really affect us in Manchester. And I kinda, it's a kind of a bit like this with the Heathrow runway. But the capacity um, point, sir, I, I was reading a, a little bit about that. And as far as I can see, capacity, you talk about capacity, that's going to create more demand. Now, they had a really good example of that was in Frankfurt in 1984. They had the same kind of problems and they built the third runway. Now, two years ago... They've now built a fourth runway. So if you increase capacity, you will increase demand and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, the, you know, we, we talked, the lady mentioned HS2. You know, this is meant to be dis disperse economic activity across the country. Well, Heathrow, you get another runway, it's going to, again, suck everything into London. And you know what? There's lots of things going on outside of the M25. I know it's really incredible, but we have flushing toilets and we have running water in the northwest. And Manchester's a great city and Liverpool's a great city and I would like to see, come on, let, let's see some of that economic activity diverted to other areas. But picking up on what Joey said, you know, we, I believe passionately, you could believe passionately that the people should have a say and it's you that's going to be affected, the people who live in this area. And so it's absolutely vital that you are consulted and you have to have that through a local referenda. And if the people who, who are here, who are affected in London, don't want it, it shouldn't happen. Um, or um, NHS funded slimming clubs really the best way towards a healthier nation. This is a, this is a kind of big story. You're a nutritionist, aren't you? Yes, that's Do correct. Do they are or not? I mean, this is the idea that the national health will play, pay for you to go to Weight Watchers and lose weight. You in favour of that or not? Um, I think it's a nice idea, but I fear it's not preventative enough. Um, obesity is a very big problem. And um, UK girls, for example, just rank third in Europe mm -hmm. as the heaviest. Um, and these girls. Oh, it's one for Joe Barton. I mean, you know, it, five billion every single year is it, the NHS spends on obesity-related illnesses. And I think if someone is going to is willing to make the effort to try, and I believe things like Weight Watchers and Slimming World, they do try to change how you look at food, how you cook food, etc. I'm sure that's got to be cheaper than spending five billion on gastric bands and di type two diabetes, etc., okay. etc. Et so why not look at the alternatives? Yeah. I think you should have a look at what they did in Dubai. What are they doing in Dubai? Oh in Dubai, they gave a gram of gold for every yes. kilogram of weight lost. <laughs> <laughs> and they spent 400,000 pounds. Something for the UKIP manifesto. Something for yeah. the manifesto. <laughs> and and what's more, <laughs> you can yo-yo and you get a gram every other year. I'll say not for that one. Then. It's, uh, it's, it's, that's Don't it. Lie, that's it. <laughs>